start the video? Or what do we want? Uh, no. Yeah, you can press do? share. Oh, share. Mm -hmm. And okay. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a theme. Um, with my cases. So start with this case. Um, this was a p patient came in with like, I don't know, so some ER vague abdominal pain or something like that. Um, I guess just focusing on the pain, Chris, does anybody have any kind of... There's a mass in the head. Right, so like... Yeah. Um, Stranding. Right, so yeah. um, there's something that my, my beloved teacher and... and uh, former chief told me as a resident that always make sure that the onset process is nice and sharp. So this is from 2014 in the same patient. You can actually see how nice and sharp the onset process was at the time. So the person who read the CT was the same, was the person who was also trained by Dr. Wozlamid. So she astutely pointed out that there's something blunted and the patient got an MR. And so this is a first T2, and you know I'm, I read it, and I saw okay maybe multiple little cysts, and and I, maybe this is what's causing this kind of appearance on um, you know on, on CT. And so I, I almost finished the case with just saying multi a cluster of cysts, and um, then I'm just going to open the four images. Oh, sorry. So, as I'm kind of scrolling through, you begin to see that there is kind of a differential enhancement, almost like in a in a mm -hmm. point, like in, in the background parenchyma. Right. Like it, it, carry, it holds enhancement late, doesn't it? I'm sorry. Looks like it enhances kind of late and heterogeneous. Right. So it's like it's like almost increased enhancement. So there's some weird kind of appearance, and so it kind of caught my eye. And so maybe there's more to this than just the cyst. And then I think on this corona, you can see it nicely. So you can see kind of. That there's some something abnormal, like like there's abnormal enhancement in the background parenchyma, beyond just the you know the IP mans. So like all that. So the patient went for um, EOS, and and uh, I don't have the pictures, but this 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 was past proven um, adeno uh, adeno carcinoma. So uh, the Take home points are two. First of all, make sure, always make sure that the onset process is nice and sharp. And then second one is, you know, don't just be satisfied with the first, because this, this looks like it's a good explanation for why the onset process is kind of blunted. Um, but then just be careful and, and always kind of keep a questioning mind, I guess. So it seems like um, all of those little branches probably got dilated because of the adeno. Mm. So um, it's kind of like the like the reason the pancreatic duct gets dilated by a head mass, but in the uncinate, you won't get it'll be below the pancreatic duct. Mm, so maybe right. if, we, if we see new IPMNs in the uncinate, you know, make sure it's not because there's something obstructing it. Either that or, or there's there's association of side branch IPMNs here. You can actually on this one you can see much much you know much nicer that there's some really <clears throat> abnormal signal in it in the parenchyma like in the background parenchyma. Um, there's also association of IPMNs with adenocarcinoma as so they're like they're markers of adenocarcinomas. So yeah. When it, was the prior? Uh, so the prior was in 2004, the most recent was in 2014. Hmm. And it was, I think it was not contrast. It was not contrast, but you can see how nice and sharp the onset process was. 
Was it an incidental finding, or did she come it was in? Incidental. So nope, she came in. This was this, the this was an ER. Sorry, this was an ER case. Patient mm -hmm. came in with some unrelated pa pain, and this was mm -hmm. uh, again. This is something that was been taught by Dr. Rosenblatt. Always make sure that to look at this part of the ANSNET, make sure that it's mm -hmm. nice and sharp, because that's what. And, but this is the first case where I have a prior to show that this is not just kind of an, you know. Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have, you know, the, the onsenate will have either differential, uh, you know, lack of fat infiltration or, you know, vice versa will be have more infiltration because they have, they come from different origins embryologically. Mm -hmm. But this is just always make sure that there's, the onset is not blunted. And if it is, it's, it's always worth uh, investigation. So, two, two things I'd like to add to your case, which is a very nice case, is... Uh, the the degree of uh, fatty change in the pancreas around that area of the head is lesser than elsewhere. And like you said, sometimes you see that in the in the ventral versus the, the dorsal onlog, but uh, it should catch your eye as some you know something's not like the other. And uh, and I agree. I, I was also taught that the unfinished process should be kind of pointy shaped uh, toward the left side. And if it gets that rounded appearance, uh, that's also suspicious. Okay, uh, one more comment, Victoria. The reason I asked about the prior is just um, for the students that like usually IPM men, uh, malignant degeneration IPM men is, um, takes a longer period of time than, than right. just, so this you know, yeah. Not IPMN. This was uh, this was an this was so uh, again. I, I unfortunately don't have the EOS pictures, but it was an actually a solid adeno uh, with you know in the background, and then these little cysts were separate. So I, I don't know if the cysts again are dilated ductal or actual IPMN, but this is not a this is actual adenocarcinoma hiding behind these little cysts. All right, so. Uh, no, that's going to, okay, so this, um, this is, this is another case, patient came in, I forget, it's an ER case, patient came in because of something, usually abdominal pain, and focusing on the liver, does anybody have anything, like, tremendously upsetting? Say again? It's a little nodular. Right. So, um, you know, so it was read as, as, you know, like there's, it's a little heterogeneous, maybe a little fluid. Um, I'm withholding a little bit of information, uh, but uh, the patient went for MR. And we're going to go jump straight to the diffusion. Oh. Mm. oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so this is just diffusion. So the, the information oh, I was cirrhosis. Yeah, so <laughs> information that I was held was the patient came in with right upper quadrant pain and went for an ultrasound. I I can't show you the ultrasound because I can't de-identify ultrasound, but ultrasound did show multiple mass. This patient yeah. got a CT. Uh patient mm. got a CT and the C T was, you know, like you know, if if, if without information of but the fact that the war mass is on ultrasound, you probably would just either pass it or say maybe a little bit of, of cirrhosis. Yeah. Certainly nothing to this extent. I've seen this in breast cancer a couple of times. Mm. Right. So um, uh, this was actually an unusual diagnosis based on PATH. Anybody want, want to guess? Sean. Sean is over there. Hello? Uh, this is actually lymphoma. Oh is, my goodness! Which is not not a typical way lymphoma involves the liver, but mm -hmm. um, but this was past proven lymphoma. So, May I ask what prompted the MRI evaluation? Say it again. What? Why did the MRI get done? What was was it something that so, was stated in the CT report, or was there other clinical so, factors? 
So what what I what I couldn't show you is that the patient initially got an ultrasound and an, because ah. I can't get I can't de-identify the ultrasound unfortunately. So ultrasound did show masses. Yeah. The patient went for CT and then CT didn't really show anything or yeah. it was just a little bit heterogeneous. So the read was we can't really see anything, you know, but but the ultrasound was pretty terrifying looking. So get an MR and you can see what MR. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in uh, breast cancer maybe two or three times where the, the metastatic disease in the liver was extremely subtle and, uh, and yet ultrasound showed it very easily and MRI showed it very easily. And, right. So uh, sometimes, right, I agree. Sometimes portal vein can be very, very, um, very, very dis misleading. All right, so the theme, of course, is, is pitfalls. So this is going to be my last case. So I'm just going to show. Nope. Uh, so I'm just going to interject. Um, Heidi, can you stop that last one and then start a new?